Hello, welcome back. I'm Ed Ballou and I'm giving you some more tips and tricks on the Helium Network. Today we're up on my roof and I'm going to go over my setup really quickly and just give you an idea of what, what things I've done to experiment with. And again, this could all be wrong, um, but this is what's working for me right uh, so far in mining uh, HNT. So let's go over the, uh, the setup here. So up at the top, let's see right up here is a rack 8 dbi antenna that's just from rack wireless and i'm going to move the camera a little bit i apologize if it's a little bit shaky here so that is just on the top of my mast secured with the u-bolts that they supplied and then right below that currently at the junction point i have my lightning arrestor and then you can see the the copper line that's coming down as well. So I, my mast is also grounded. I have the line that's going down all the way down to the to the ground, uh, to a grounding rod, and you can see that. So uh, that, that goes basically right down through here. And all this stuff is kind of next to each other. Again, if you have some more comments on that about what's right and wrong, drop them in the comments. Happy to, happy to pass that information along. So um, this mast I um, also have on here, you'll see that I have a, a directional over-the-air TV antenna. So this is commonly called a Yagi. You can also do the Yagi setup for uh, the Helium network as well. Uh, keep in mind that that is directional. So, and if you combine some directionals, maybe you're in the uh, mountain pass or something like that, where you're only going to be going in one way or another, maybe you could combine them, but every time you, you com use a combiner for antennas, it lowers your DBI. So think about that as you're doing your setup. Now, again, this is, this is a, an over-the-air TV antenna and not part of the Helium network. It's just, I used it on the, on the same mast uh, to double up on it. So I also have it reinforced. You can see some, some uh, steel wires coming uh, across here. And this is um, wrapped around part of my chimney and then anchored over on my roof as well. And then I even went in on the inside of my roof and anchored uh, up into my attic and then I anchored it from the other side as well. There's some more work I wanna do there just to reinforce this thing, but this, this is pretty sturdy. It's not moving back and forth. I'm trying to shake it right now and, and it's doing pretty well. So um, let's see here, what other things in this setup? Uh, you can see that this is the cable uh, right here which is the LMR 400 cable. I just ordered it from usacoax.com uh, and got it shipped to me over a couple days. It's been a great experience. I've done it like, I think three times now. So one time I did order the wrong, the wrong part. So you gotta make sure that you have the right parts. In fact, I have a replacement for it right here. So here I have my end type and then this would be the male. It, it, uh, you might think it's the female, but uh, the screw part on is the is the male part. And you can see that inside there, um, if I get in the light here, you can see the, the uh, wire coming out there. Also on the other side is an RP SMA. This is the male as well attachment. Oops, sorry. And that connects right to the miner. And so I have this going down the pole um, to, um, inside my house. I have a hole drilled in the in the side of my house and it just goes through and, and uh, that's the setup. Now one thing I didn't do in this setup um, that I saw when I was actually looking at a, a direct TV antenna thing is they had the cable, picture this as one cable, but it was still looped in a, in a circle. And I was like, why, were they, why are they doing that? And so I looked up and uh, there could be two reasons. One is just a simple drip loop. So as, as you loop something, the water, of course, will not be able to tra traverse back up the the uh, cable so it drips down then it doesn't get in your house or wherever it's going so smart thinking i will be doing that and I, fortunately I, when i ordered my replacement cable i ordered it a little bit longer so i will be doing that in this setup with a at least a drip loop the other use i, I guess is called a uh, colin balin i think is what it's called and um, you can correct me on terminology or usage and whatnot but uh it, what it does is it, it basically can improve the signal. It might not, but it could. So um, feel free to look that up and share some more comments in the, uh, on that. So uh, let's look more over this setup. Again, I've got the lightning, or sorry, the uh, 
the rack 8 DBI antenna connected directly to the lightning arrester. And then I have, I think if you can see it, there's a green wire here and I'm moving it back and forth, but it, it goes up the side and it goes right to that, that lightning arrester. And I can zoom on this in a little bit. I don't want to make you guys sick. I'd rather talk about it first and then show you all the close-up stuff so you can prepare yourself. I don't like shaky cameras, so. All right, so. Again, up here is the Rack 8 DBI antenna, lightning arrestor, grounding wire with the LMR 400 cable coming down from there. Everything's zip-tied. Everything's um, tight and it's not going to rub in the wind. That's a wear and tear on the, on the wires and the, everything that you want to watch out for. All these masting cables too, I talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, these are, um, there's a really cool video uh, out there on YouTube talking about how to do these. And uh, I think he says the phrase, never saddle a dead horse. So talking about which way you put these little um, buckles on it so that um, you have it on the right side so that the nuts are on the opposite side of where the wire ends and then I have these things that as time goes by I can I can tighten them say if it's not level or it um, needs to be um, just tightened up because of the wear on the on the cables are, are slacking out then I can tighten that up so I've done that from all all three directions here and uh, it, it works so far, anyways. So coming down here, um, not too much more to speak of. It runs all the way down. I did uh, take a, this is a kind of a, a steel pipe or a, a galvanized pipe that you'd get using commonly in plumbing. And I ran that into, you can't see it here, but um, the a common, um, or what do they call a mast that you just get off Amazon for rooftop mast or something, antenna mast. So that's, that's what I put there. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And then just zip ties. Zip ties all over the place to secure the setup. Make sure those wires aren't moving around, that everything's kind of locked down. Plus it just looks really nice. So, um, all right, moving on down here. This is a transition part from the, the uh, galvanized pipe to the mast here. And um, I just reinforced it so it wouldn't wobble around uh, a lot as, it's, as it's, um, it's locked in there really tight. So we'll keep on going down. The other part that I wanted to show is right here. So right here. Now what this is, is this is a grounding uh, block. And what you do is you run your grounding cable, so that's this is my grounding wire right here going all the way down to the grounding rod, but it goes through there and then it takes all the, the, all the metal and basically grounds it. Also, I have my little grounding, the, the green wire here, if you can see it, um, goes straight into the grounding rod as well, so, or the, the, the grounding clamp. And so that gets everything all grounded as far as I can tell. Again, this is what the um, electrician did when he came out to my house. Not this one, but an another one. And he set this up and it was good to go. So um, I kind of copied that setup here. Uh, massing, I, if I had to do this all over again, I definitely would go with sort of a, a tripod mast rather than um, one. I can lower the camera here and talk about this. So. The, this is nice because I can I can rotate it one way or another and then also vertically so that to make sure it's straight up and down in the air it's great for all that however the the setup is is really uh, prone to wind um, just it's very very wobbly so if you have like a, a three prong or some way to to um, put it down with more reinforcement, it's just gonna be better all, all around. And then here is the uh, LMR 400 cable. Again, I got a, a longer one, so I'm gonna be able to take out a lot of this slack and actually bring it back up and maybe do a couple more zip ties, just clean it up a little bit. Also, I think for most select electrical type of stuff, it needs to be uh, put 
uh, right anchored to your house or, or anchored along the way, I think, to, to be official if there was some sort of inspection done, um, if you're selling your house or something like that. But this is just temporary, um, you know, for, for right now to see see what I can do and, and if I need longer cords. And I, I knew that I'd have to run into something like drip loops or something like that. So I didn't put a lot of effort into it. It was just something to keep it safe, make sure that uh, everything's connected and, and so on and so forth. So that is my setup. Again, I'll, I'll go back up if you if you just fast forward to the end. We got our grounding clamp here with our grounding wire. We have the uh, wire that's going up to my lightning arrester. So that gets all the grounding as much as I can uh, done. Uh, one note on that uh, lightning arrester is that they actually recommend that it be closer to the entrance to your house. So that's one thing in this setup that maybe if I if I redid it again, I would consider it. Um, there's a weakness in that though that I'm not too crazy about right now, and that I'd have to run that this uh, little green wire a long ways in order to get to my my grounding rod. So I left it at this and. Um, probably a calculated risk. Uh, again, if you got comments on this, feel free to, to share them. I'd love to, to get some more information about that. All right, going back up the, the uh, mast here. So just a bunch of wires, transitions, reinforcing. I did uh, take my mast and I drilled holes through it in a couple different locations uh, to bind it so that such that, because I was joining two masts together, such that it wouldn't move around. So it reinforced it a lot more. All right, again, I have my Yagi uh, over the, the air antenna so I get free TV. Shout out to HD Home Run if you're, if you're looking for over the air TV. Uh, products that go go to your network amazing stuff so that's what I use there and then up here I have my lightning arrester again this is LMR 400 cable up to my lightning arrester which is connected directly to my antenna if you think it's wrong give me the comments I appreciate them we're all learning in this so anchored with two u-bolts and I actually, there's two grooves in the antenna. You probably can't see it, but there are two grooves, and that's where these U-bolts are running through on the rack ATBI. And this has been really good. I've gotten uh, anywhere from one kilometer, um, just not too far from me, to 35 kilometers uh, to the to the north here, and that's where this this Yagi is is pointing. So it's been uh, pretty good uh, results. Uh, this is about uh, 30, 45 feet in the air somewhere in that direction uh, to to my right here this direction um, there's a forest um, just a small one so it's still getting some really good results through through there so uh, of course it is um, winter still and there's no leaves on the tree I don't know what what that will do once we get into leaves being on the tree and that will dissipate the signal a lot more because it's all line of sight so things to keep in mind uh, lastly um, Let's see here. Yeah, lastly, and I will move the camera for this. If if you have any more comments or you don't, if you get camera sick when it's moving, uh, just stop now. <laughs> um, and I'll give you just a little sight of where where it goes. The LMR cable. So this is the uh, my wire as it's getting routed around my chimney, and then it goes over the side of my house and then just down the side of the house. And I'll get you as close as I can and seeing where that goes. So you can follow the wire down there and it's a long way down. Again, I apologize if you get camera sick. I will put it down here. Again, thank you for watching this video. If you have any more comments, uh, drop, them, drop them below. Uh, please subscribe, that always helps. Get the message out to fellow miners out there um, I just do this because it's fun and it helps everybody um, get up to speed. Mining that HNT, <laughs> in a way, I'm actually uh, spreading that HNT out, you know, by by sharing this information and getting your earnings up. So it's worth sharing, and uh, I just like being part of this network. I think that it's got a lot of legs to it and it can accomplish um, some really cool things. Uh, if you if you start thinking about down the line, what could happen if we build out this network 
such that it's worldwide. What else could happen when we were transacting over the entire globe with uh, cryptocurrency? It's already being done, of course, in many other aspects, but uh, communicating across the world is, is something entirely different. So anyways, thanks again. Uh, hope you like this. Subscribe, drop some comments in, let me know where I'm wrong, and I'll keep putting out those links for you all. I know that they keep asking for them. So thanks again. We'll talk to you later.